Hello, I'm Dr. Susan Heitler. I'm a Denver clinical psychologist and author of Prescriptions Without Pills for Depression, Anger, Anxiety, and More. I'm so happy to have my next door neighbor with me today, Marilyn Vanderbur, also known as Marilyn Atler, uh, wrote the book Miss America by Day. That's right, she's a former Miss America, and I give you such credit, Marilyn, for having brought to awareness and made speakable the whole question of incest, since that was such a f huge aspect of your life growing up. What's interesting is the worst thing that happened to me uh -huh. became the best thing that happened to me. Incest mm -hmm. was, I, I, I can't even, there are no words to describe what that was like. But now mm -hmm. that I people are coming to me from around the world. What a gift that is. What and a privilege. And the impact that you've had. Oh, it makes me emotional. <laughs> that nobody, very few people even said that word, incest. Never mind talked to a therapist, to their family members, or even to themselves about having been molested as children. You started that revolution. And now it's on YouTube and, and the they email me. <laughs> So one of the ideas I'd like to focus on today that is very much the part of being an incest survivor and also a part of everyday life is anger. So when, when I say anger, what does that bring up in your experience? I didn't, I didn't have anger. Um, I repressed it. <laughs> hmm. I repressed it. And when I went, my life shut down when I was 45, and from 45 to 51, um, people uneducated would say I had a complete nervous breakdown. What I was actually mm -hmm. going through was called recovery. Oh, and that means going, right. going back and, and healing the child and the teenager and that I was. And does healing involve necessarily feeling some of the feelings that you couldn't let yourself feel at the that's time? All it's, that, that, that's it, mm -hmm. is you go back and have, it's, it's just, it's horrific. Um, it's disabling. I, I couldn't dress myself many times. I couldn't uh -huh. read my mail so or answer my phone. So that was enabling, was the amount of anger coming up or just the incapacitating strong feelings Well, there, in uh, cohort feelings? All, 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 all the feelings came up. But mm -hmm. one day, uh, I was in therapy from 45 to 51, and one day my therapist said, you need to find your anger. And I said, okay, how do <laughs> I do that? Answer, I like, anger okay. Anger. <laughs> I, I'd really like to do that because I know mm -hmm. I need to do that. Mm -hmm. So... How do I do that? Uh -huh. um, she didn't have an answer for me. So it says, ask and it will be given you, seek and you shall find, knock and it will be opened unto you. So I asked. I called it the energy. I asked the uh -huh. energy. Please, I need to find my anger. How do I do that? And one day I'm in the kitchen at lunchtime. Uh -huh. And the TV comes on, and Gary Hart, who is a senator from Colorado, is running for president of the United States. Oh. And the news is Gary Hart is found having a relationship with a woman young enough to be his daughter. Oh. Young enough to be his daughter. And I start yelling at the television, young enough to be his daughter, young enough to be his daughter. Larry come home, comes home from work, and I said, leave the room. The news is going to come on. You're not going to want to be here. Larry sits down quietly he knows exactly what's going on your husband is so my husband is amazing keep going and the whole gary hart I, I knew that was my channel i mean i knew gary hart re represented my father and i think my father was so powerful and so terrorized me that going directly at my father was too hard for me so being able to be angry with gary, gary hart. hart was that was uh, my channel an opportunity for you. And I raged for a number of months. Um, my anger, when my anger came up, it was at everything and everybody and many times inappropriate. Mm. And Larry would run behind me and say, I'm really sorry, excuse her. <laughs> she has oh. anger issue. <laughs> and, then it, and then it was gone. I, I, I worked through the anger. I didn't get stuck in it. Hmm. And how, what's the nature of working through? Is it just the more you yell and scream that somehow you're cleaning yourself out? Or is it more, what well, you tell me? Well, I was angry until I didn't have to be angry anymore. And what enables you to no longer be angry? Have to be angry. 
I worked through all of the anger that I had stored. I just didn't have it anymore. It's the same thing with sobbing. Uh -huh. I would sob convulsively. And one day I thought to myself, I haven't sobbed in weeks. And that was the first clue I had. I'm going to get through this. This is very interesting because there's a controversy within the field of psychotherapy. Is it better to visualize anger as like a steam in a teapot and it has to get out? Or is anger something that the more we focus on it and the more we talk about it, I'm so mad, I'm so mad, actually keeps building up? Or is there uh, some uh, truth in both? Uh, I can only tell you what, what worked for me. And what worked for you was the got to let it From out. From the depths of my, it wasn't rage. It, uh -huh. it wasn't anger, it was rage. Blood I red see. rage. Because I would try to stay very still and quiet at night. I never spoke to my father. I never said a word. Mm -hmm. I pretended I was asleep from mm -hmm. age 5 to age 18. Wow. Um, so, and as your body begins to develop as a teenager, it just, mm -hmm. so I had a lot of, I had a lot of anger. You were certainly violated in every way. In every way. And um, anger is the emotion that comes up when, uh, you know, if Canada suddenly sent planes over our border, right. we would feel angry right. and it mobilizes us to take action. Right. In your case, you were angry, but you couldn't I could, mobilize. I had no or way to move. express it. So then it gets buried in, and that kind of anger does need some way of being oh, released. Otherwise, it I comes totally out in your body. Agree. Right. If we don't get it out of there, it, it people, I, you know, I, my body went into paralysis for 13 years. I had physical paralysis. Wow. That's, that was the beginning of it. Um, I, I will say that there are now new energy therapy techniques, techniques like something called emotion code that releases the energy without someone having to do all the yelling or, or the sobbing oh, or the... Wouldn't I have loved that? Right. It's a, times are changing. Tell me about that. Uh, well, if you Google emotion code, <laughs> it's actually a chiropractor, really? Bradley Nelson, who came up with this system. I've, I'm reading his book. Oh, really? The emotion code, Bradley Nelson. I just got it. Yes, isn't that's well, that's pretty scary. Here, yeah. <laughs> uh, so we do some of that. I work with an energy therapist in in my office. That's a newer technique, and it's uh, based on the idea that anger really is lodged in your body. Yes. So releasing it enables you to be free. Well, I will tell you the paralysis. It only took about, I'm saying, three to six months. Of, of of releasing feeling anger. the anger feeling the uh -huh. anger. It, and not just at Gary Hart mm -hmm. I, I was just angry um, mm -hmm. and did not try to shut it down nor did Larry my husband Larry ever say you need to cool this down uh -huh. he would just go wow. he would just go around and say I'm sorry <laughs> to other people <laughs> kind of pick up after me I was he's the best but I worked through it and it, it it's just gone I, so I work through it in your case means releasing it. Yes. I just, ah, yes. kind of like a massive vomiting out of all the anger. Yes. Sometimes working through anger means coming to see the situation in a new way and ideally to change the situation. So if Canada invades us and we see the planes coming in over the border, hopefully someone would do something about it. The president would the get phone. on the phone, <laughs> what's going on, whatever. Depends uh, on which president. <laughs> Um, so whatever, um, in our lives, when we feel angry, I think part of what I take from your experience is the importance of being able to feel the anger and do something about it so that we don't get to the point where we have to just rage and vomit it out, but rather where we can use it as a sign that says, oh, there's a problem here. You're getting something you don't want or else there's something you want that you're not getting. When I reframe it that way, the second half of anger, who or what comes to mind for you? Something that you wanted that you weren't getting. From your father, you clearly got well, invasions I, that you didn't want. What I wanted from my father was what I learned when I went to self-defense classes. Well, which was? Um, when the man came, who was uh -huh. our perpetrator, um, we were to really we were taught over seven weeks what to do. And when he came and put his arms around me, 
I just wanted to put my arms around him. I just wanted him to hold me. And I, I froze. I froze, and the, and the head of it said, we'll take a break now. Hmm. And I, So, are you, go ahead. I, I, found, I, I, found, I found him. He was Greg. He was a student, and he, I uh-huh. found him, and I said, would you hold me? And he said, of course. And I cried, and I cried, and I cried, and I cried. So, what you wanted was not to be invaded, but to be held. I wanted just, I just wanted, a, I just wanted a father to love me. And I never got that. Not one, not one minute. So you got what you didn't want, and you didn't get huh. what you didn't want. Until I married and, Mary, <laughs> and, and then I got it all. Such a happy ending. <laughs> I love happy endings that uh, they met each other, fell in love, and lived happily ever after. I was 15, and, and he was 17, yes. It's amazing. And what you've done with all the wisdom that you've garnered from going, going through this dreadful experience what a gift to the world. Thank it's you so privilege. much. Thank you. Thank you. Oh.